Hello, good morning. Thanks for joining in today. Today I'm going to talk about a condition called hypersplenism. What is hypersplenism? In simple words, hypersplenism means overactive spleen. Whatever the spleen does in our body, which I have discussed in my first video in the season on the spleen, the functions of the spleen. In hypersplenism, those functions are being done but too much, so which is harmful to our body. And I will explain in a second what happens that affects our body during hypersplenism. The first thing to understand is the difference between hypersplenism and splenomegaly. In my previous video, I spoke about splenomegaly, which is the large spleen. There's a difference between a large spleen and hypersplenism. In a large spleen, the spleen might be functioning normally, although it is larger than normal. Where in hypersplenism, the spleen may be very large, and which means the patient has splenomegaly at the same time as hyperactive spleen. But in some patients, the spleen might be normal size, but still be overactive, functioning too much, which is causing harm to our body. So what happens in hypersplenism? To understand what happens in hypersplenism, it's important to remember the functions of a normal spleen. You might remember in my video on the spleen, I explained that the spleen has couple of main functions. One function is to protect our body against infections, especially certain infections. The second function, which is a very important function of the spleen, is to remove damaged, old, dead and dying cells from our blood. And those cells are white blood cells, red blood cells and platelets. And I explain these cells in one of my future videos, what their functions are. So if you keep that in mind, and when the spleen is functioning over time, it starts killing too many red blood cells. When too many red blood cells are killed or removed from our body, or they go and collect in our spleen, because as I explained a minute ago, that in many patients with hypersplenism, the spleen can be very large. And that large spleen collects the blood in it. It stores the blood in it. So we do not have enough blood going around in our body. So we do not have enough red blood cells. The patient becomes anemic. Anemic is low blood count. The second problem that can happen that the spleen is collecting white blood cells. And since the spleen is functioning not properly, it is start removing too many white blood cells from our blood and the white blood cell count becomes too low. The third thing a hyperactive spleen is going to do is remove the platelets from our body. If the red blood count is very low, patient becomes anemic. If the white cell count is very low, then patients start developing infections and certain infections and even a mild infection in some of these patients can be life threatening infection. Low platelet count means that the platelets are the first cells which stops us from bleeding. So it makes the blood clot. So if we have a cut on our skin or we are bleeding from inside our body from anywhere, the body is going to try and stop the bleeding by making a blood clot. And platelets are the first cells which are responsible for making the blood clot. If the platelet count is very low, then the patients cannot stop bleeding easily. And even a minor injury or minor bleed can become life-threatening bleed. So what are the causes of hypersplenism? The list is very, very long list. So I'm going to divide it into two main causes. The first cause is what I'll call the primary cause. Primary cause means the main problem is with the spleen. So spleen is not right. There's something wrong with the spleen. The second is secondary cause, which means spleen is an innocent bystander it has got nothing wrong with it, but there is something wrong outside the spleen. And that is affecting the spleen to become overactive. And I will take each at a time. So primary hypersplenism is rather uncommon. Conditions like ITP or idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura in which the platelet count becomes very low because there is something wrong with the spleen despite having a normal size spleen, starts destroying our platelets. Hence, the patient has a tendency to start bleeding even from minor injuries or minor cuts. And the bleeding can be life-threatening bleeding. 
In secondary hypersplenism, spleen is usually very large, so patients have splenomegaly. Common causes, liver disease, which causes portal hypertension. Please watch my video on portal hypertension for more information. Many infections like malaria, infectious mononucleosis, uh, tuberculosis and many other infections can make the spleen become overactive and many of these patients have a large spleen as well. Many cancers of our body, especially lymphomas, leukemias can make the spleen become very large and become very hyperactive. Condition called storage diseases in, in which our body can't get rid of the fats in our body, sometimes carbohydrates and proteins in our body and some of those can collect in the spleen and cause the spleen to become hyperactive. So how do we diagnose hypersplenism? So when the patient goes to the doctor, doctor will examine the patient and many of these patients will have a large spleen, will have splenomegaly. Blood tests will be done which will show that the red blood cell count is low, which is patient is anemic, the white cell count is too low and the platelet count is low as well. An ultrasound scan will show a spleen to be large and sometimes obviously patient with portal hypertension, the liver might be abnormal as well. A CT scan will also show a large spleen in many patients or in some patients a normal size spleen as well, but can show other problems which might be causing the spleen to become hyperactive. A bone marrow biopsy can also be done which will show that since the spleen is chewing up all the cells in our blood, the bone marrow where all the blood is normally formed in adults is trying to work over time to make up for the loss of those blood cells. So what is the treatment for hypersplenism? The treatment of hypersplenism depends on what is causing it. If there is a condition outside the spleen which is causing it, for example, a cancer or infection, or liver disease, then if that is controlled, then the hypersplenism will improve. So if you remove the cause in those patients, especially patients who have secondary hypersplenism, then the hypersplenism will improve. If however, the main problem is the spleen or the spleen is becoming troublesome, even in secondary hypersplenism, then the only option is to remove the spleen. Now there are two ways of removing the spleen. One way is removing the spleen is to stop the spleen from functioning and that can be done with extra treatment or radiotherapy to the spleen. The other option is surgical removal of the spleen called splenectomy and this I will discuss in my next video. So I hope you did find this video a bit informative and gave you some information and insight into what hypersplenism is and what is the difference between splenomegaly and hypersplenism. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Take care and thanks for watching.